Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a book haul and I've got so many pretty books to show you guys. I'm very excited. I will try to keep the descriptions brief, like maybe just the first paragraph or so. So if they sound interesting, you can go check them out. Some of them I have already done reviews for, others you can have the full description in maybe an unboxing if that's what they were from. Or all of the books will be linked below so you can check them out if you're interested in them. I can't wait to show you guys. The first book in no particular order would be Dead Man's Hand. I did buy this earlier in the month though, so I guess kind of first, I don't know, by James J. Butcher. This is the first in the Unorthodox Chronicles, which is his first published work, and it is an urban fantasy. Our main character is a wizard, right? They call them wizards, I believe, in the series. And I really enjoy this series. I see tons of potential for it going forward, and it will invoke, you know, Dresden file feelings, like the atmosphere kind of feels the same, except he is far less jaded as uh, Harry Dresden. But he is younger, so you know, there is, um, there is less weighing on him. On the streets of Boston, the world is divided into the ordinary usuals and the paranormal unorthodox, and in the Department of Unorthodox Affairs, the auditors are the magical elite. Government sanctioned witches with spells at their command and all the power and prestige that came, came with it. Grimshaw Griswold Grimsby is not one of those witches. He flunked out of his auditor training and you don't really understand why until you get into the book and then you kind of see what's going on with him. He is still our central character. He considers himself kind of a failed magician. Well, the rest of the world considers himself a failed magician and he gets put into the center of this ongoing investigation thing. From what the description says, it's different a little bit of who the person with the investigation is about. And we do also see from a secondary perspective, sometimes like the prologue starts out in somebody else's viewpoint and then we switch to Grimm's Feast after that. I did a full review for this though because it was super enjoyable, really liked it, and you can go check that out here if you would like more information about this book. Though I do recommend people check this book out because it was really good. The next book that I got in the same shopping trip, I believe, is The Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling. In my monthly wrap up, because I'm brilliant, I said that this was the sequel to itself instead of saying it was the sequel to The XX. And it's not exactly a sequel. It's like a lot of other series where in the secondary book you switch to another people's perspective. That way, you know, it keeps interestingness. I, I mean, I don't know how to describe what it does. But in this one, we are following Gwen, who is Vivian's cousin. It says, Gwen Jones is perfectly happy with her life is Graves Glen. She, her mom, and her cousin have formed a new and powerful coven. She's running a successful witchcraft shop, something wicked, and she started mentoring some of the younger witches in town. As Halloween approaches, there's only one problem. Llewellyn Wynn Wells Penhollow, which would be Reese, our main male character in the XX, is older brother. He has come to town, and of course they cannot get along, and it's adorable, and I love their back and forth. And of, of course there's more, more Sir Percival in this, the talking cat, who's adorable. Yes, this series in general is super fun. It takes place around Halloween time, so like how you have maybe those cozy, hallmarky Christmas movies. Think of this as the Halloween equivalent. It's so much fun, and this one just continues. I kind of like Gwen better as a main character. She's just freer and yeah. Next would be Throw Me to the Wolves by Lindy Ryan and Christopher Brooks. This is the unplugged edition with the prettiness and oh my gosh I love the edges that they did. This is Unplugged's first special edition and it's just some evil wants to live forever. Ten years ago, a witch sacrificed Britta Orchard's family and turned her into a werewolf. Selena Stone's spell failed and she was never seen again, until now. Officer Aaron LeBay has discovered Selena's remains in a house where Britta's family died and dragged Britta back to Louisiana to add in the investigation, hoping her past will break the case. Britta has a hard time resisting the handsome rookie, especially when he shows her a new drawing by her murdered little brother, Britta in her wolf form. 
So we have, I almost said vampires, werewolves, and some magic, and some uh, nice southern charm in Louisiana, it sounds like. And it's not very big. Maybe the word's tiny. I don't know. Normal size, but this is just so pretty. I don't know when I'm going to get to read it, but it's so pretty. Yeah, I'm plugged hardly ever since it's hardback books. So that was cool and a nice addition. And the next books, because, yeah, I didn't get just one book. I got the whole box set for the Kingdom of the Wicked, Barnes & Noble's edition, since... Kingdom of the Fear just came out. They released all of their editions again and the prettiness of the covers and yeah. So I still haven't read this. I was hoping and I was like, I got the box set. Now I can finally start the series, read the series. Have I read it? No. No, I have not. The series of course starts with Kingdom of the Wicked and our main character is Amelia. She and her twin sister are witches that live among humans in kind of secret hiding, but her twin sister is murdered and she goes on a quest for vengeance and to find out who did it and ends up working with um, some princes of hell who are called wicked as maybe one of them is also trying to find out who is murdering women, not just her sister. Other women have been murdered as well, but can she trust him? Who knows? And I do believe each of the books encounters a different prince of hell or takes place around them. I don't know. I have read Carrie Mascano's work before though. I liked the Stalking Jack the Ripper series very much. Interesting series. Very much enjoyed how she did that. My next book is Cackle by Rachel Harrison. Based off the description I had read in September, I expected this book to be funny. I'm not sure. I think it was just the way it was pitched. I don't know. All her life, Annie has played it nice and safe. After being unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend, she seeks a fresh start. Annie accepts a new teaching position and moves from Massachusetts to a small village upstate. She's stunned at, by how perfect and picturesque the town is. The people are all friendly and warm. Her new apartment is dreamy too, aside from the oddly persistent spider infestation. Then Annie meets Sophie. And um, the whole town has something weird going against Sophie and so you get the magical aspect of the is she, isn't she. The magic doesn't come into play a whole lot at first. It takes at least halfway through the book before you start really, really seeing it. But the interactions between Annie and Sophie and really it's just mostly Annie finding herself through all of this. I did a whole review of this one too if you would like to go check it out. And my current read right now, A Prophecy in Ash by Julie Zantopoulos. Yes, I think I said that right. Okay, this is the sequel to A Curse in Ash series. In this one, we are following Ash again and her Rivati Riordan, as well as her Fey person. Spoilers. In the first one, though, Ash is a witch who is very powerful, and she is meeting this person, and things in her town are turning upside down now as they have to battle this curse that is actually affecting most of the world and put together the pieces as, you know, it's part of her job as a witch and because she works with the police department. So as people in her town are becoming more and more affected, she's investigating and trying to get to the bottom of this. This book takes place after the events in the first one, obviously, and things are happening a bit differently. Things are happening very fast. Our characters are dealing with the fallout of the first book emotionally, mentally, and it's it's just a lot for Ash to take on. So far I would say this book's pacing is going a bit faster because we don't have to do the whole getting to know the characters, getting attached to the characters quite as much in this one. And it hasn't been for a bad thing. It hasn't been bad. One of the things I do feel like was kind of an obvious setup of now they're going to know something. Now they're going to know for sure that that, that happened. If, who did it? But oh well. It's fine. Then we have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick, which is our very edition of the book with its something colored edges. Green, blue, green. I'm not sure what color you want to describe this as. But this naked cover of the book 
It's gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. And this one, our main character is Elspeth Spindle. And she has a spirit trapped inside her that she calls the nightmare. And he protects her kind of, but she can't control it. And she's getting more and more controlled by it until she kind of uh, runs away and meets a highwayman in the forest and she's thrust into a world of shadow and deception. Together they embark on a dangerous quest to cure the town of Blunder from the dark magic infecting them. The fact that there is a town called Blunder though. The description of this one though sounded really really cool and I think I did not give it justice as I was just describing slash reading a little bit of it. I don't know. It definitely sounds very dark as like all the pictures of it does look dark. It takes place mostly in the forest and on the forest road. So yes, I think this is going to be a great read for the winter as it is dark and cold once it eventually gets cold again. We're in that time where we're trying to do second summer fall. It's 80 degrees outside. Also in the fairy loot box was a paperback book with more stenciled edges but this one sounds really really cool celestia is heir to a powerful magic locked away in a tower by a cruel king her destiny to foretell death and harvest doomed souls to feed his immortality nox is a soldier who has spent years plotting vengeance on the crown now he's determined to steal the king's immortality and kill the entirety of his court starting with celestia because of course she would uh, kill the witch responsible for making the king mortal but it sounds really cool and it sounds like, you know, things will happen between those two and they work together and I want to read it. I really want to read it. I need to find time and it to come up on the TBR because there's so many things. But I really want to read it because I was not expecting to get this book and now that I got it, it's really cool and I love this cover design. Alcrate sent us this edition of The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson. Hodgson Burnett names. This one is mostly black and white on the cover with spots of green to just pop through there. This is one of their classic editions. I'm glad to have another one. I think I can read this to my daughter. I just have something that's not all unicorns and princesses for her to maybe enjoy. I think eight, she might be old enough to, maybe. We'll see. This is just very nice to get this in because I don't have an edition on my bookshelf. And last would be the Alcrate edition of The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. And uh, this is just very pretty and just in its black and whiteness just stands straight out. Delaney is tired of being seen as fragile just because she's deaf. So when she's accepted into a prestigious program that is trained students to slip between parallel worlds, she's excited for the chance to prove herself. But her semester gets off to a rocky start as she faces professors who won't accommodate her disability and a pretentious upperclassman fascinated by Delaney's unusual talents. And the upperclassman she doesn't remember knows her from before because apparently she saved his life or something. But they're being told you know, to stay away from each other and then they uncover things about how maybe it's dangerous to deal with this parallel world. And um, yes, it is very, very nice sounding. It's very dark academia sounding as well. At first I wasn't sure if I wanted it because I was like, I don't want another boarding school like book maybe, but then it did say university. So I was like, okay, okay. They're maybe a little bit older. Maybe they're not going to be so tropey there. So we'll see. I don't know. I think maybe this will be a good January read. I think so. Well, October ended up getting a lot of books. More than I think I've gotten a month in a really long time. So I wanted to show you guys all the pretty editions in case some of you don't tune in to the unboxings. And that's okay. Now you can see the pretty editions anyway without having to watch the unboxing. I get it. They're not everybody's jam. But I just can't believe I got this many books in one month. If you want any more information about some of them though, the links are down below or I have reviews for two of them and you can check out my October wrap up for the ones that I actually did read in October. We will have to do this again after Christmas because I promised myself I will not buy any more individual books before Christmas. And I'm going to stick to it. 
I'm going to stick to it. But after Christmas, you know, hopefully we can have a very large book haul of all the things from Christmas and that I bought after Christmas. I can't wait. Fingers crossed. Thank you guys all so much for watching though and I hope you enjoyed this and we'll come back for another video and I will see you then. Bye guys.